Yeah, yeah, I think someone said it earlier, the fact that it's always there. There's not really a moment that you can turn off and not think about it, I guess when you're sleeping, but the reality is that it's not really, because you can, you can have a low blood sugar, just sort of the ever-present nature of it. Um, and today there really is not an option for that to not be the case. That's a huge burden, and especially compared to diseases such as cancer that are you know, a fight for a year or two, and then it's hopefully over. If I had to pinpoint a specific area that I would like more oomph into, it would probably be for women during their menstrual cycles because there is so much either on one side insulin resistance, like beyond control, like my temp basals, so my insulin levels, they're usually 15 units on background. When I'm a week before that happens, it's usually 26 units. Like that's how much more insulin I need, but my numbers eating five carbs, it will spike it like crazy. Um, and, but for some people, it can become really brittle or really have terrible lows. So I think that's interesting because that's a whole one, one and a half weeks if you count the leading up to it period out of a month that it's just diabetes is really interfering with a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing that I worry a lot and spend a lot of time worrying about is actually my kids. And as an adult, I take one, most people don't appreciate the dramatically increased risk for the next generation. Um, I have two sibs. We have two sibs here. The risk in New York City is one in 300. The risk for my kids is 10%. I mean, we need to also push on preventative therapies. This is a big partnership with we have with my good friend David Panzer at the Helmsley Trust. It's prevention, and I think not enough people appreciate, especially in the clinical community, that there's this increased risk for the next generation, and we need companies, more companies, to be looking at uh, preventative therapies. I think that that's probably the single most important thing that you can say is that it's, uh, I've been dealing with diabetes now for 47 years. I am so pleased with the way things are now compared to the way they were 47 years ago. The syringes, it's a, it's a whole different world. It's so much better now, but somebody new to it right now might not feel that way. But I feel like, oh, uh, this is it's a piece of cake now, it's walking apart. However, there's still the idea that I don't want to be 90 years old. I want to be 90, but I don't want to be 90 years old and having to check my blood sugar or look at my sensor or deal with the insulin all of the time. I've done enough. I've learned a lot. I've helped a lot of people, but I've done enough and it's time for me to get a break. 